this is one of the newest contenders in the foldable scene, the Techno Phantom V Fold. Now, Samsung isn't the only one on the block with these foldable phones, but does the Techno V Fold have what it takes to compete with them? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and let's find out in our full review. The V Fold is Techno's first foldable phone, and it's also one of the first rivals to Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold 4 to appear in global markets. One advantage Techno does have right off the bat though is a much lower price. This is launching for about the same as a typical flagship. The V Fold emulates the successful design made popular by Samsung, with the cover screen on front and the large folding inner screen tucked away inside. The Phantom V Fold does bring some of its own charm into the mix though. The back panel is made of some polycarbonate with a fibered texture. It feels almost like cloth. Also, the multi-step camera bump lends a unique aesthetic. Otherwise, the V Fold looks like your typical foldable phone. It is on the heavy side though, weighing in at just under 300 grams. There is no ingress protection here, which Samsung's foldables do have. Let's talk a bit about the hinge and the folding mechanism. It feels pretty sturdy. And unlike the Galaxy Z Fold 4's hinge, the Technos folds flat, with no gap. But on the other hand, the V Fold doesn't unfold as flat, retaining a bit of an angle even while open. It's worth mentioning that the Techno doesn't stay open half folded either, which limits some of the extra utility of the folding form factor. The Techno Phantom V Fold's front display is a 6.42 inch curved 1080p AMOLED with a 120Hz refresh rate. The aspect ratio is wider than the Galaxy's, which is on the narrow side, and that makes the Phantom feel more natural to use in one hand. When the device is unfolded, you get a larger 7.85 inch AMOLED with a 2296 by 2000 resolution and again a 120Hz refresh rate. The crease on the folding display is relatively smooth and unobtrusive here. Both the inner screen and the cover screen use LTPO tech, and they will give you the smooth 120Hz while you're swiping around, and then they will dial down as low as 10Hz when you stop interacting with the display to save energy. Both displays look nice, they're sharp and contrasty. Maybe not the most color accurate though, whites tend towards bluish. And there's no HDR video support here either. Besides that though, there is a major issue when it comes to streaming video content. For example, YouTube works fine when played back within a window, but in full screen mode, the V Fold will actually dial down the refresh rate to 10Hz after a few seconds, leading to stuttering. And it's not only on the folding inner screen, the same thing happens on the cover screen too. It's pretty frustrating, and we hope Techno will fix this soon through a software update. But besides that, brightness also leaves more to be desired. We measured a maximum of 500 nits with a manual brightness slider, and there is no boost on top of this in auto mode, so the phone isn't as comfy to use outdoors on a sunny day. For audio, the V Fold has a pair of stereo speakers. The loudness is very good, and the sound quality is not bad. The mids could be better, but you get nice treble and some bass. You can wake up and unlock the phone with a side-mounted fingerprint reader built into the power button. And the V Fold comes with 256 or 512 gigs of storage, and that isn't expandable through microSD. The interface of the phone is a foldable specific version of Techno's HiOS 13, running on top of Android 13. There are plenty of options when it comes to multitasking, as it should be on a foldable device. Every app has a button within a status bar, which gives you split screen and pop-up options. Alternatively, you can hold that button and pull down on it, and that moves the current app to the side while opening the app drawer to choose a second app. You can also minimize an app into a pop-up window by swiping up from the bottom of the screen and dragging the app to the side. Then there's the pinch gesture. If you pinch in with four or five fingers, you'll shrink the full screen app into a larger sized active pop-up window. The task switcher also holds icons for both split screen and pop-up window modes next to the apps that support them. App pairs are a thing too, located near the top of the task switcher. These shortcuts will launch a split screen you've already saved on the fly. Or maybe you prefer to use the smart edge panel to enable your multitasking. Tapping on an app icon opens it in a pop-up window, and dragging it to either side of the screen takes it into split screen. There are a couple of limitations to the split screen though. You can't resize the windows when in split screen, it's locked at 50-50, and you can't split horizontally either. 
Besides the multitasking, you get a standard Techno software package, which includes features like a dedicated game mode. The chipset of the Techno Phantom V Fold is MediaTek's high end Dimensity 9000. It's a flagship grade chipset that's in the same class as last year's Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. In benchmarks, the Techno does a great job, demonstrating performance that's on par with Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold 4. The thermal management is decent too. The Phantom V Fold did a good job in GPU stress tests. The CPU stress results weren't exactly smooth, but still not too bad. The Techno Phantom V Fold comes with a 5000 mAh battery, larger than the Z Fold 4's. However, in our proprietary tests, the battery life here wasn't quite as excellent, but still decent, with an overall endurance rating of 92 hours. With our screen on tests running on the cover display, the results were a bit better, with a rating of 114 hours. The V Fold supports 45 watt charging, and with the bundled adapter, we were able to charge from 0 to 62% in half an hour. There is no support for wireless charging here though. Now the cameras. On the back, there's a 50 megapixel main cam, a 50 megapixel 2x zoom camera, and a 13 megapixel ultra wide cam which has autofocus. The main cam's photos are pretty good, with excellent sharpness and detail, and balanced rendition. They do seem exposed a tad too bright though, and the color rendition is on the conservative side. The zoom camera's 2x photos are nice, with a bit livelier colors and plenty of detail. The fine details, like foliage, can end up looking a bit sketchy though. If you're shooting a distant subject with the ultra wide cam, the resulting shot is actually a composite, with the center of the photo being sourced from the main cam. This means that you get softer detail around the edges. The effect looks good though. And since the ultra wide has autofocus, you can use it to take close ups. These look good, with sharp and detailed subjects. In low light, the main camera's photos aren't perfect, but they're still good. The detail is very good, and noise is well contained. The dynamic range is just okay. The phone struggles with contrastier scenes, where you get clipped highlights and dark shadows. Enabling the super night mode will get you improved dynamic range, restoring those highlights and boosting the darker areas. It smears some details, and there is plenty of sharpening added too. Zooming at night will get you photos from the dedicated camera, no crops from the main cam. The detail level is respectable, but you again get dark shadows and clipped highlights. Super Night Mode delivers the expected improvement in dynamic range, with the trade-off of smeared details. The ultra-wide low-light photos are rather soft, unless the composite processing happens to kick in. In that case, you'd mostly be looking at results from the main cam. The dynamic range is decent, all things considered. Super Night Mode seems to disable the composite processing, but otherwise there isn't much difference from the regular shots. Now let's talk about selfies. You actually get two different selfie cams, a 16 megapixel one on the inside and a 32 megapixel one on the cover screen. Selfies from the cover screen selfie cam have plenty of detail and good exposure. The colors could use some more saturation and the dynamic range isn't the widest, but these are still good. The internal selfie camera is pretty good too. It renders detail in a way that's gritty and sharp and the dynamic range isn't too wide. But with those cameras aside, you have the ability to take selfies with the rear cameras too, as you'd expect from a foldable phone. Selfies from the V Fold's main camera are really nice. The detail is very good, the skin tones are lifelike, and you even get some natural blur in the background. The Phantom V Fold records video in up to 4K at 60fps with its main and zoom cameras. Footage from the main cam has nice looking colors and plenty of detail, but the contrast is too high, resulting in a narrow dynamic range. Zoomed videos are just as contrasty, and the colors have a bit of a magenta cast. The ultra wide's video recording again brings that high contrast and low dynamic range, and on top, the resolution here is capped at 1080p. Electronic stabilization is available on all of the cameras in up to 4K at 30fps. One thing you can't fault the V Fold's videos for is stabilization. It's excellent on all three cameras. In low light, the footage of the main cam retains plenty of detail, but also exhibits plenty of noise. The color saturation is good, and the dynamic range is reasonably wide. Zoomed videos at night are so-so. There's an okay amount of detail, and the dynamic range is decent. The ultra-wide struggles in the dark. These videos are soft, with limited dynamic range. So that's the Techno Phantom V Fold. Overall, it's impressive that Techno is offering a full-fledged foldable phone for so much cheaper than the competition. There are a couple of missing features like waterproofing and wireless charging, and the displays are in some ways inferior to the more expensive options, especially with the current buggy refresh rate handling. 
But still, if you're after a new foldable phone and want to save a few hundred bucks, the Phantom V Fold could be worth considering. Thanks for watching, guys. Here are some alternatives to the Phantom V Fold that we've reviewed on our channel, starting with the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. Another option is the Honor Magic VS. Let us know what you guys think, and I'll see you on the next one.